of the Switch Mania Playcast! The Puck episode. The episode where we have all the technical issues that you guys don't have to worry about. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. This is just a normal recording. As long as we can keep uh, true too. the internet's going, we'll, we'll be okay today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. It's been a, another wild and crazy week here. <laughs> That's for sure. Holy cow. Yeah. yeah, they seem to blend nowadays for some strange <laughs> reason. It's maybe because we're all stuck inside. That could be it. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I haven't been inside at all all week. I've been working 12-hour days, not in my house. Been in, been actually at home less than I've been at work, but stuck inside. Yeah. <laughs> Barry and I have been inside more than we've been outside in, like, the last couple months. Yeah. Gross. That's true. <laughs> so gross. I uh, gotta love it. But that's okay. Yeah. So um, this will be the week, this will be the first episode for everybody that we're gonna have a you know premium edition games focus on the podcast. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, everybody that's uh, watching on the live stream and you can see on the title cards if you're listening on Anchor, um, you know it's obviously we have a little bit more of a focus because the game of the episode is also our first game, which is available right now at premiumeditiongames.com. Uh, Super Blood Hockey. Those that are have been interested, um, the shipping is about half of what it was when it launched because there was a website snafu. Um, so those that were domestic and interested, it is available and shipping is normal. It's fun. It's always good when you, you work out those bugs. So shipping, yeah, it's great. Now that we can offer first class shipping, I mean, it goes as low as $4 depending on where you live. So definitely much much more in line with what it should be. So if you, you know, we're on the site on day one or day two and you haven't been back, now's the time. Yep. It's always the time. It's time. always the time. Exactly. So um, also, Switch Collector is still for sale. It's at HagensAlley.com as well as PremiumEditionGames.com. Each site has less than 40 copies left. So it is about out of stock. Um, we are working on volume two, though, uh, that will work out in between game releases. Mm -hmm. um, and as always, five star ratings and Apple Podcasts are always appreciated. You can still leave a message on anchor.fm slash switchmania if you want to record a message for us. Uh, it could be about the podcast or even about the games. And our company or whatever. Maybe whatever even you something you want to see in. Uh in volume two because i know i've already been getting a lot of questions as to so when is volume two going to be going up on kickstarter when is it going to be starting i'm eager for it uh so i'm i'm glad i mean that means you know the the volume one was well received which is what our hope was and it's fun now because year two is where we start all the indian limited publishers yes. uh, so it's going to be a really interesting year because i mean year two is really where the switch just started ramping up and it really hasn't slowed down since then year one was the nice, like, calm, everyone could collect kind of year. And year two is where it's like, haha, we just, uh, surprise. It was very deceptive. Yeah. But like you just mentioned about questions, um, that's another thing you can do on Anchor. You know, ask us a question. We'd love to mm -hmm. answer. Yeah. Absolutely. And just so you know, too, on um, Discord, we do have a Premium Edition Games Discord. Uh, there's a mm -hmm. lot of requests over there, as well as just everybody chatting about Switch games, which is always fun. Mm -hmm. um, so what's happening in the news, everybody? Barry, would, would you like to start? Oh, you got the big topic. Just go. For you it. got the yes, big topic. Yeah. Old so the JB. Indie World Showcase uh, premiered earlier this week. It was you have to my my days blend together. Was it Tuesday or Wednesday of this week? No idea. Tuesday. It was too wow. It was that long ago. So this was about a twenty minute presentation where they really focused on. For me, I'll. I mean, I think most of them for me were new indie titles that I did not know about. Maybe I'd seen one or two previously somewhere, but, you know, they really showcased a lot. So what I did is, as usual on Twitter, I had uh, live tweeted it. And let me see. And I, and I made a list. So live I mean, I'm tweeted. <laughs> I live tweeted. So every time they showed, you know, I took a screenshot. I wrote down the name of the game when it would be available. Um, and we could go through it. And then maybe we could just talk about some of the highlights as we go through. But. You know, mm -hmm. if you didn't watch this, it's on Nintendo's YouTube channel. I highly recommend it. There's some fantastic games, and some of them were like surprise drops right on the eShop after it aired. So 
I know, you know, just from seeing all the feedback, people are already downloading. Some of them have beaten a few of the games already, and it was awesome. I mean, I really – it was such a strong showcase. Um, so before we go through the list, uh, Barry, Jeff, did you watch it? Um, Jeff, I know you didn't watch it probably when it aired, but did you get a chance to see it afterwards? Oh, I absolutely watched it afterward. I also listened to the Nintendo Power podcast afterward where they interviewed one of the game developers. Um, so mm-hmm. it's super cool. But as you go through the games, like we'll just talk about the ones that really stood out for us. Yeah, so I'm just going to go in order, um, and then I can also give the release date uh, of when you could expect it. So the first one was Hades, and that's fall 2020. Any comments on that one? That one was really cool. I'm yeah. I'm excited for that one personally. Yeah. I think that Hades looks really awesome. Um, I like how it's the same um, same company or the same developer that did Bastion, um, mm-hmm. and it's and Transistor, and it has you know really cool. Those games had a really cool aesthetic to them. And mm-hmm. from what I heard, it's like taking the best of all those games and rolling it into one. It's like a thirty hour experience or something. So wow. I know it's on Steam, so I'm definitely looking forward to just um, checking it out. Mm -hmm. I I have to say, like, the word indie for me feels very different from what it used to be because I I saw some of these games. They don't feel like indie games. Like, yeah, they may be from small studios, but, I mean, they're like, to me, a lot of them are triple A. I mean, they just have such high quality to them, Um, rich story. And it's just, it's amazing that it's, like, these small indie developers just making these, like, masterpieces, honestly. Um, So, to me, indie just feels like a whole new category nowadays than what it used to be. I agree with that. You know, the indie scene used to be just, like, two or three guys in a garage Mm -hmm. making a game. uh, And now it's, you know, full-blown studios that just happen to be small or just don't. You know, now it almost feels... It's not about the amount of people even in the studio. It's about the budget. Like, AAA is just really talking about how much money behind it. Mm-hmm. And you can make some really amazing games on a low budget. And that's just really what indie means at this point. It also yeah. shows me that Nintendo, um, what they consider is indie, isn't necessarily now what we consider all being part of the community as indie, which is interesting. Right. Right, yeah. So the next game, um, I did not know about this one, and then I read up on it after, but it's called Hypnospace Outlaw, and it's actually coming out next week on the 27th. And this one, um, I started reading a little bit, but it's pretty much taking place in the 90s on the web. Like, it's just, it's insane. Like, you're you're, you're on the, so apparently what happens, and I'm probably going to butcher this, but like, when you dream, you can access the internet. Barry, correct me if I'm going off topic, but this is what I was... uh, reading up on but it's like all the different websites you could design like your own uh, place on like 1999 we'll just say like the internet so it's just like those crazy sites all made up companies stuff like that and it looks really cool like you're browsing like a 90s web in a video game um yeah and this one like caught me by surprise completely but i'm like you know what like i would want to check that one out like it's very different from any of the other games i think out there on the eShop. Uh, but it looked really cool, so I'd highly recommend, you know, reading up on that one. Uh, I mean, the next, I'd like yeah. to be able to go to, like, Tripod or GeoCities and make a web page again. Oh, like, my gosh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Angel Fire? Angel Fire, yeah. Well, <laughs> Angel Fire days. was a classic. Yeah. I had an Angel yeah. Fire page. I'm sure I, I had one. Um, the next one is called Spirit Fairer, and that actually came out on the direct day, so on the 18th, it's on the East Shop. And this one is by Thunder Lotus, and I actually got to play it at PAX East. Uh, earlier this year and it's really cool because it's a mixture of an adventure game along with um uh, i don't know what the genre is so i'm just going to explain it but pretty much you're this girl with a cat and you're helping people cross over and it's really like um artsy car- like uh hand-drawn like cartoon graphics but not like cartoon like silly but just like these beautiful paintings and you're going around and you're doing quests for them to help them pass over but at the same time you're managing your ship where you're carrying them so they're going to live on your ship you build relationships with them you see them interact with each other and you keep expanding your ship so you know you're building like another deck level you're building another place for the people to live and it's really cool i mean it's it's I, i would highly recommend it and i will say like as we go through these so many of these like you know us as a company like i'm really hoping we see physicals i'm hoping we get to do physicals on some of these because they they're, they're that amazing oh uh, yeah 
For sure. Okay. So next one is Garden Story, and that's coming 2021. Someone want to explain that one? That one kind of – it didn't catch me. It was one of the few that – it, it looked like it was a really interesting type of game, but not one that made me get excited like some of the other ones. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so. Yeah, and no, I mean, I don't have a whole lot of depth on a lot of these games, so if you're going to ask me to explain it, I can make <laughs> up a story based on the title. No, no, no. So, <laughs> I'll take a stab so at you, it. No, no, no. So you traverse a vibrant island to combat invasive rot, inspire its inhabitants, and rebuild your home. You won't have to do this alone. Fruity friends await, ready to lend a hand. Uh, it looks cute. Um, again, yeah, same with me. Like, it's not my type of game, but I'm sure it's going to appeal to a lot of people. Uh, the next one was a, a two-for-one. It's Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero, uh, hmm. both coming out early 2021. Interesting. That one, that one I thought was interesting because it is absolutely on Xbox Game Pass right now. Um, mm-hmm. so uh, I'm going to check it out just to see if I dig it. Um, hopefully though, cause that one looked really cool. I hope, I hope we see that one come out physically as well. Yeah. Um, the next one is one that I've already seen at least one person in the switch. We tag every single publisher, us included, uh, begging for a physical. So, you know, that's a good sign when they play the game, already beat it, and just love it so much they want to own it physically. But it's called Takeshi and Hiroshi. Um, so that also dropped on the direct day, so on the 18th. And just really quick, uh, it combines the two worlds of puppet animation and role-playing game. It tells the story of two brothers and their daily life, and it's your goal to make Hiroshi really enjoy his game. Uh, let him meet big challenges, but preferably to prevent him from losing. He has to choose which monster shall appear when and struggles more and more as the challenges for him as a game is difficult. Uh, it looks really cool. It's not that long of a game. You know, I asked my friend when he beat it. He said it's a few hours, but he said the story was just amazing. Like, he's ready to replay it already. And, you know, this one caught my eye because of the an- the, the animation for it, but it looks awesome. You know what's yeah. crazy, too, is that it seems like as JP's going, sometimes he overloads my internet and completely pauses for about a second so it's his yeah. side everybody that's listening not not our side yeah but no so moving I... forward i will say the name of the game and i will let you two talk oh fine <laughs> <laughs> i'll make Did something, you want to say something Barry? i was gonna say with takeshi um the, the i like how the game itself is like this 2d you know rpg but when you're outside it almost reminds me of like a claymation or like those mm-hmm. old like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, kind of. I think I posted a GIF. It was like, Davy and Goliath. Okay, Davy. That's what it reminded me of, is that <laughs> claymation. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, my. All right. So the next game was Raji, an ancient epic, and that also dropped on the 18th. That might be my game of the, uh, the whole uh, Indie Direct, for sure. I just loved the different cultural aspects, and seemed like the developer was really into it. Yeah. yeah, that was my game of show. In fact, when I'm watching that, my wife literally picked up her Switch and bought the game. <laughs> you know, oh, wow. Digital only. She bought it, so she's already played. I've watched her play a little bit of it. She's having a great time, really enjoying it. Um, well, you know, I might take her Switch and play it as well. <laughs> it just nice. looks really good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so the next game was Bear and Breakfast, coming in 2021, and it's a yeah. management adventure game where you play as a well-meaning bear trying to run a B&B in the woods. Uh, they look cute. Uh, any comments on that one? I've seen this one compared to Animal Crossing a lot. Yeah? Okay, that's interesting. Interesting. Yeah, because I thought you were going to say Barry in breakfast. <laughs> I probably should have. Um, <laughs> From now on, that's what it is. <laughs> so the next one is called A Short Hike, and that also dropped on the 18th. And here... Hike, climb, and soar through the peaceful mountainside landscape of Hawk Peak Provincial Park. And along the mm. way, you meet other hikers, discover hidden treasures, and take in the world around you. Yeah, interesting. This was another one that I, I saw a lot of people uh, comment on. Yeah, I like this one. I like the exploration aspect. It almost almost gives off a 3D platformer vibe, in a sense. Mm-hmm. So the next one is coming out 2021. It's called Card Shark. Uh, this one really... Uh, got my attention because um so it's a tale of deception through the 18th century europe 
or the comprehensive catalog of card tricks and other deceptions employed by the Comte de Saint Germain, as described in Memoir Saint Peral. But pretty much, you are you're the whole like basis around it is you're playing this card game where you do have to cheat. And I just thought it was really cool because. Um, yep, there's been there you have real card manipulation techniques and <laughs> and mini games with a roguelike progression. I think it looks cool. I I like this. I wonder. How many people, like, do you remember back in the 90s when Tony Hawk's Pro Skater came out? We all played it, and we all loved it, and everyone yep. felt like we can skateboard now. Yep, like, yep. we could totally skateboard, like, <laughs> and do all these tricks because we did it in the game, and obviously we couldn't. So I have a feeling people are going to play this game, and they're going to, you know, because these are real-world tricks, and they're going to get, like, overconfident, and they're going to get in real trouble trying this out in real life. <laughs> I mean, for me, I, I wasn't quite sold on it, but I'm going to have to play it. For, for example, before I uh, before I know if I'm gonna like it or not, because again, it gave me vibes of the card game. Uh, the what is it? The games that just came out that we covered, the fifty action fifty three, yeah, clubhouse. <laughs> oh, the clubhouse games. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the next one is Torchlight three coming fall twenty twenty. I personally have not played the Torchlight series before. Have you guys? Yes. No. You have so, Barry? All right. I did uh, a Torchlight? I wish was physical, but the first game did go to Xbox Live Arcade when I was still collecting those games. So I'm a huge Diablo fan. I mm -hmm. love I love that style of game. So Torchlight is very much Diablo style, mm -hmm. and the first game did something really cool. Um, it, it was almost a mimic of the original Diablo, where you had like one town and then a dungeon going underneath it, and it just kept going deeper, and you would teleport back to town to sell and mm -hmm. and uh, you know buy new equipment. And it was always random whenever it was in the shop. The Torchlight 1 was like that, except you had a pet with you. And the pet, when your inventory was full, you can give the items to your pet, and the pet would go back to town, sell all the stuff, bring you back the money. But the pet also fought with you, so when you sent it back to town, you were now without your pet until it got back, and it took mm. a couple minutes. And it was really cool because it, it didn't interrupt the flow, continue exploring without, oh, hold on, got to go back, got to sell mm -hmm. all the and I didn't play two, but from the trailer to three, it made it seem like they took the pets out of two because they, they highlighted, like, pets are back. Right. And it looks amazing, and I really hope that that one does come physical. That was my number two game from the show, mm. and I, I love Torchlight, and I really would love to play a three. Oh, I just, I just know for a fact, though, that I would not have time to even remotely try to get into it. So that's where it's like, eh, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next game dropped also on the 18th. It's called Manifold Garden, and it's a game that reimagines the law of physics. You rediscover gravity and explore a beautiful Escher-esque world of impossible architecture. It looked cool. I like puzzle games. Uh, this one definitely has that aesthetic to it. Um, definitely trippy. But I think I think it looks cool. I, I would want to try that one out. That one kind of gave me a headache. Yeah. Trying to figure out how many stairs were going the right way. <laughs> it's <That's> infinite. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next game is called Evergate. Also dropped on the 18th. Uh, you awesome, game, unleash extraordinary power and dive into the touching store story of two kindred spirits. So it's a 2D puzzle platformer from P Cube, and it is getting a physical. I think it's on Amazon France or Spain right now, but uh, yeah. there is already a pre-order, so we should be seeing that one physically, which is nice. Um, that one reminded me of Ori in the Blind Forest very mm -hmm. much. Like I thought it was Ori too, uh, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh my god!" And I was like, "No, this isn't Ori, but it's you know White Spirit, and it does look good though." Nice. Yeah. Uh, the the yeah. next game. So that was yeah. the one that looked like Ori in the Blind Forest. Yeah. Yeah. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, that one did look pretty cool. I did, I didn't know exactly what the mechanics would be like, but yeah. It, it reminded me of, like Ori and I don't know if you guys played the game Lightfall on the Switch, mm -hmm. um, where you where you jump and you can make your own platforms as you jump, and that's part of the trick. And this is what kind of what it was. It was like you're floating and like you broke these crystals and made a platform for you to land on. Okay, that could yeah. be fun then. Yeah. So I think this is at the point now where they like sped up their their direct. And they just, like, bombarded you with quick trailers after trailer. Um, I actually had to go back, I think, two or three times to catch all of them because I just felt it was, yeah. like, there so was much. There was one which, game which in there thing. that I reached out to you guys that I thought looked really cool. One of the games in that whole trailer span. I don't remember which one. Once you go over it, I'll remember that. Sure. So the next one is called Haven. 
and that's coming 2020, uh, date to be determined. And it's an RPG adventure that you could play solo or co-op hmm. with a special someone. Um, you know, I'm looking special. at it. It looks pretty cool. Like a special someone. <laughs> special your special. Someone. That's literally what it says on the eShop. Your special someone. Special someone. Not a lot to do like, with anybody else is not special. On the yeah, like, that's right. What do they do? Like, if two enemies decide to play the game, does like one control or electrocute the player or something? Like, no, you are not a special someone. Yes, yes. Took a dark turn, Barry. Exactly. Dark turn. <laughs> so then on September 24th, we have Going Under. It's a satirical dungeon crawler about exploring the cursed ruins of failed tech startups uh, in ah. the dystopian city of Neo Cascadia. You wield office junk as weaponry. I mean, that I, I like that because you already know it's going to be funny. Uh, and it looks funny, too. So I'm just like looking at the screenshots. And that would be one that I would check out. I think it'd be fun. Yeah. I thought you were talking about America there. Sorry. America, no. Um, so the next one going is dark coming out. <laughs> What's going dark? Barry keeps going dark with this. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> He's getting darker. <laughs> so let's let's bring it back into the autumn 2020 where we see Red Lantern. Now this one has been shown before. Um, yes. and, I, and I think even at PAX, I remember it was in like the indie booth. Uh, it looks really... Survive the Alaskan Tundra in this story-driven survival adventure game as you find your way home with your team of five sled dogs. But it looks it looks pretty. This so that game one, uh, I can't play. I, you can't I play this one either. Trailer, like when it first came out, and the, there was like a woman discussing it, like the lead, and it yeah. looked fantastic and great. And then there was a scene with the bear attack, and you like on the ground, and the dog pr trying to protect you, and the bear swiping the dog. And I'm like, I can't play this game. I can't play a game where animals are getting hurt or killed that you like grow an attachment to. I, I mm -hmm. can't. Like, I'm too much of an emotional person. I will cry. <laughs> I don't want to cry when playing a game. Mm, Fair enough. Interesting. But that means it, tu it, it tugs at your heartstrings. Yes, it does. It, it, it the trailer, that first trailer tugged at my heartstrings. Yeah. But after losing it, like if you never had a pet, it, it might not have that effect. But when you have a pet, especially like a dog in this case, because it is a dog, and you lose it, and you, you feel that grief. Like It's mm -hmm. not a fun feeling at all. I hear you. All right, so the next game mm -hmm. is coming September 23rd. It's called Unrailed. Multiplayer game where you work together with your friends to build a train track across oh. endless procedurally generated worlds. Yeah, this is one that just like again, just like it was during that rush of them, and <laughs> like I have to go back and like watch some of these. It looks pretty cool. Um, again, it's not normally my style of gameplay, so, um, but it could yeah, be for somebody else. Interesting. JP is like you said, unrailed, and then your computer paused on you, and then it came at Micro Machine Man at us with the rest of your information. <laughs> So if this is your first time listening to the podcast, this Jeffrey is... will talk about my internet about a hundred times. Well, it's because it's minute. classic JP. Talk about it cuts out like halfway it, through. Your every history. time it's cutting out. Every time you talk, JP. I, I can't do anything about that, unfortunately. So Re reboot your computer before we record every time. I did, <laughs> I did, and then I did it again. Um, so You're next fresh. one is struggling, and I'm just gonna give the names at this point. So if you guys are able to. Uh, comment on it i'll leave it to you yeah. but struggling is coming out august 27th so next week cool all right good feedback uh next is in most i know nothing uh, about these games out... <laughs> fair enough in most is coming out today august 21st oh, nice I don't, I don't remember this at this mm -hmm. point it was just like they were they were like rapid fire and i didn't go back and rewatch. yeah okay so in most is a cinematic puzzle platformer looks pretty cool um, next is She Dreams Elsewhere, and that's coming out early 2021. That was the game that I messaged you guys about that I thought looked cool. Don't remember why I thought it looked cool, but I thought it looked cool. It just caught your attention? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, what type of game yeah. is it? It's a surreal adventure RPG about... Damn. ...and the extent to which they mirror reality. That was fantastic. Yeah, really. I like JP explain it and then it paused on us. <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> JP heard is it's like, and then silence, and then you just came back at the end of what you were saying. Well, I hope you uh hope you like that. So next one is Grindstone, <laughs> coming autumn twenty twenty. I don't remember Grindstone. Yeah, it's a hit puzzle battler, and then next one, second to last one is Goner two. 
Have Connor. either of you played two? Connor, Connor one before? Nope. Nope. No? Okay. Um, it's... Well, I explain it, but you probably won't hear it. And then the last one is uh, the Untitled Goose Game is getting a free two-player update. That mm. Yeah, so that should be fun, and that's uh, September twenty-third. So that was the uh, Indie well, World the physical, Showcase. I believe, right? That that, that update. The physical. It, it will not be on the physical. Oh, uh, oh. No, I am eight-bit had said that for people who buy the physical, you'll be able to download it for free. So mm. it doesn't sound like it's going to be on the cart. That's sad. Yeah. Why wouldn't they put it on the cart? It makes no sense to me. Yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't know. I find it funny because um, this actually came up in discussion earlier this week, where um, uh, Limited Run Games had announced that they were, you know, pushing back the release of Pandrager. Yes. Because of all the big updates that were taking place, and everybody was like, "Yes, great call. That's exactly, that's perfectly fine. It's the first time I'm happy to hear about a delay. Um, you know, good reasons." And then other people are like, I think there was like a meme or a joke somewhere, but it's like, but when they did it for Celeste, everybody complained. And it's just, you know, it's funny. I just, uh, maybe people are now really realizing that it's it's worth waiting for when you yeah. get more stuff on the cart. But um, yeah, it's a shame with I Am 8-Bit that they didn't, for whatever reason, they're not putting this on, on the I, cart. The whole point of having a physical is for down the road when the servers are down and you could still play the game, hopefully in its complete form. So mm -hmm. down the road, if you want to play, you know, Untitled Goose Game, you could still play the single player, but you won't be able to play co-op. And I think that's a shame. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's interesting. That was the rumored Nintendo Direct that we were hearing about a week or two ago that was going to come out. Like, that's what they consider. It's the Indie Direct. But that's what we, we saw that coming, like, from a while ago from the leaks. So. Well, I will say that, um, interesting you say that, because I was watching an RGT85 video the other day. And he said that the last time this happened, where we had an indie, about two weeks later, we had an actual Nintendo Direct. Hmm. And then he also alludes to the fact that on Amazon, there's these Mario controllers now that are coming out September 1st and September 4th, which is just about two weeks from when this aired. So, hmm. you know, everybody, I mean, he feels, and he's, he's probably not wrong, that we're going to be seeing a Direct that's going to showcase the Super Mario 35th anniversary. And we'll Skyward Sword. See. And Skyward yeah. Sword, because there's been multiple yeah. leaks now of websites carrying Skyward Sword. Yeah. We'll I mean, I think, I think it's great. You know, they're finishing up the uh, Wii U first-party games, and they're just going to start moving backwards to the Wii now. And yeah. that's perfectly fine. I mean, they can go all the way back to NES if they want. I mean, if they remove the gimmickry of Skyward Sword and just turn it into a straight Zelda style, oh. I mean, cool. I feel like they would have to, because if somebody has a, a Nintendo Switch Lite... Are they going to have to dock it and play, you know, with their, jo uh, like, a That's detached Joy-Con on a small Can't screen? No. Yeah, I mean, I, I would personally prefer it if they kind of do traditional controls. Me too, I, or at least an option. Let an option, yeah, because that's how I would end up playing it, even with a, a full-size Switch. Yeah. It would so, be interesting to see the battles, too, because I know the gear in battles, you literally had to, like, swipe oh, okay. a certain way, and it was annoying mm -hmm. as hell on the Wii because it was so in un non accurate mm -hmm. uh, inaccurate when you were doing it so like it would be interesting to see if they like streamline it and you'd have to like do button presses that might actually be pretty fun like i can understand when you want to have a game that has that kind of gimmick but there should but for like a zelda game i feel like that should have been an option absolutely yeah. well the I main mean... selling point or the main drive of that kind of game <laughs> that's how they make those games though i mean nintendo will always build their games around some type of of gimmick or yeah. style and mm -hmm. that's why I haven't made a new f-zero game since you know sega did gx they've they've actually gone on record and said like we don't have any new idea for it so we haven't made it and mm -hmm. people people like just give us more of the same like new tracks mm -hmm. yeah, uh, we'll be happy with it like no no like that's why star fox zero they they had to wait for that gimmick and that's why that was in there every game they put out paper mario they've stated like every time there's going to be a new battle system don't that's like their it facing it around um and that's just it like nintendo never wants to just do the same thing they every game has to be unique and with its own thing and sometimes that works beautifully and you know when you get mario odyssey and you get breath of the wild and stuff like that and other times you get star fox zero and you get you know game and wario and you get mm -hmm. these games that are not very well received uh animal well, crossing well though when they don't do that and they release an iterative title like mario maker 2 or 
New Super Mario Brothers, U Deluxe, or when they do Smash Ultimate or they do other things, they get criticized for not being, <laughs> not changing <laughs> up the volume. And I even, know, that's another thing. It's You're ironic. Right. But it's ironic, though, because then they're like, oh, it's just another game in the new Super Mario Bros. series. I'm like, yep, and I like it. <laughs> like, How many people have said, like, every Mario is the same, and it's like, really? Have you played every Mario? <laughs> not the same. No, not uh, at all. Every Zelda is the same. No, they really are. <laughs> but that's just it like even even with mario it's like you don't necessarily need to change up that much like you know with cappy it was it was being able to control other characters and yeah, enemies and whatnot and that's that's perfect like that's a, a the right amount of change along with you know new worlds and whatnot but yeah i mean if we're gonna talk super mario really quick odyssey i thought that was just a fantastic game and it was the first one that i've beaten like a full mario game in, in a long to time do a full like standalone episode on that sucker we should Mm-hmm. I I would go revisit like I did all I got all the moons I did all I mean at that point I got all the the costumes and I think since then they've done you know additional ones but man when that game mm-hmm. came out I think I put in maybe 55 hours into it and that's like post with the post game stuff which was just great yeah. side of the moon what a I mean <laughs> as as we're in the middle of our launch windows we may have to just revisit some classic titles we've all beaten just to absolutely like all of us have played or whatever just just because like it'll be yeah. easier to, to maintain because it's it's been hard this week to play i'll tell you that much oh yeah and this is the game that we're actually launching and it's tough to play <laughs> yeah it's it's a busy time for us that's for sure um right. so that was i mean that was the big thing so i think we should just go around if you have to just you know you liked it didn't like it what are you, what were your final thoughts on on what they showcased so barry um i thought it was better than that direct they had that eight minute partner direct mm-hmm. uh, i thought i really think this was probably one of their better indie directs or indie mm-hmm. directs or whatever however you want to lump them uh just a lot of great games i've seen a lot of positive reception from it mm-hmm. um and a lot of surprises like you know like the untitled goose game getting an update was cool like mm-hmm. yeah, but but it wasn't like a new game it was just an update and you, it was kind of weird that they ended on an update, but still the rest of it just was filled with so many surprises. Yep. Like I, you know, Torchlight Three, people didn't know about that coming to Switch. Raji took everybody by storm. Like so many people, oh my god, that game is yep. amazing, and that came out of nowhere. Uh, and I think that's and a lot of shadow drops too. That mm-hmm. also helped. I, I do. I probably will give this a uh, probably around an eight out of ten, eight point five out of ten. It was a really good presentation. Mm, I like arbitrary yeah. scoring systems that we have no <laughs> no scale. On. No scale. That's just my personal. Barry, eight, I agree with eight, you. That's what point, I would give to. Eight point two seven three four two. <laughs> so Jeff, what do you think about the direct? So I like when they do these indie directs. You get to see different developers get highlighted. Like Barry mentioned, the Raji is just one that like captivated a lot of people. You saw a lot of hype. It builds mm-hmm. hype. It doesn't get overshadowed by the big Nintendo titles. Um, I think it's the way that Nintendo's been going forward for a while now. Um, mm-hmm. And I hope we see more of them just because there's so many games coming out for the Switch. It's great. To see some games get some focus. Yeah, I will say also, I should have written this part down, but I really like that a lot of them are timed exclusives now. I mean, they're coming out first on the Switch, which mm. I, I think is something that you probably wouldn't have thought about in 2017 when you know you, you knew that indies were coming out onto the system. But here we have these timed exclusives. And I think what was great about this Direct is in 20 minutes, you know, they obviously showcased a lot, but they also still had the developers and the team's talking during them so they show like a tease yeah and and to me that's always my favorite part i mean i I think i've said this before but this is why i love doing interviews in the past um because you get to know the story behind the games you get to know the people behind the games and then you you start building a deeper connection with the game because you know how it was made where it came from that passion and i love when they can when they can do that so and a good kudos. segue jp is that we're actually going to be rolling those out on premiumeditiongames.com with our own interviews with the That's developers right. of our games like i know we at least have sean who did the music and our cover art um yep. for the game so that's going to be our first of many interviews <laughs> yeah and, and yeah absolutely i mean 
a lot of times, you know, you could read a description or a synopsis about a game, but when you finally hear the story behind it, how it came to be, the inspiration, I mean, it takes it takes an appreciation to a, a whole new level for, for me, and I'm sure for a lot of other people. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so that was obviously, I mean, probably one of the biggest things from Nintendo this week, but was there anything else you two noticed or want to talk about? Yeah. I have something. I got a couple, too. Okay. Barry? Um, I don't know if you guys have been following this um, this Epic versus Apple slash Google episode going on right now on the phone, but this is a pretty big deal. Have you guys seen this? Nope. I, I have a little bit, but why don't you give the, the wallpaper for it? So pretty much Epic made an update on Fortnite where it'll pretty much anything like on the App Store, if you purchase anything on any app, Apple gets a 30% cut. Mm. and the developers get 70%. So uh, Epic decided to make a new option where you can buy Fortnite bucks or whatever it's called through this other option on the app and save 20%. So they would get 10% more and put past the rest of the savings onto the consumer. Mm-hmm. Apple put this as breach of terms of service and pulled Fortnite. Shortly thereafter, Google did the same on Android. Epic came back and said, well, this is not against terms of service because there's a loophole because Fortnite is not just on your platform. It's on other platforms and people can buy on the Switch. Mm -hmm. They can buy Fortnite bucks and then spend it on their account on the App Store. So, you know, it's not really part of this. And Apple said, no, that's not the case. It's still against our terms of service. So Epic is now suing both Apple and Google Meanwhile, Apple is not only countersuing, but is actually pulling all Epic games and access to the Unreal Engine from the App Store, which means people pretty much who develop their games using the Unreal Engine, their own personal little games, will probably not work anymore. So this is going to be pretty devastating to a lot of indie developers that fly on the App Store all all because of this stupid feud. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Because this is pretty detrimental. Well, first of all, it shows the importance of physical. Because, <laughs> yes. like, for real, if something like this happened to the Switch and they pulled all the eShop games that had a certain engine or something, like, literally everything that's on a physical will still work, minus the updates. <laughs> yeah. But that's just, like, super important, though, that we need to see, like, more physical with with gaming like that's just ridiculous oh i don't like your terms of service gone it's like yeah well fortunately i have a cartridge of fortnite yeah <laughs> actually with on the switch it's a download code i know that's the crazy part but no i mean i definitely had seen kind of like the headlines on this i, I didn't follow it to your extent barry but i will say yeah there's you know stuff at the corporate level but you clearly see in my mind at like a, a surface level that they don't care about the consumer in this in this matter. They don't care, like you said, about the developers. They are so ingrained in, in what they believe is right that they don't care who else, you know, is is in the crossfire. And yeah. that you know, things get to a resolution. I hope we see something soon. Um, but yeah, I mean this this could have long lasting impacts even if everything is restored, you know, uh, in the short term. Because, you know, companies may also start thinking twice and they may start reviewing their contracts and their terms very carefully and they may opt for i mean this could be a, a disruptor in the industry I mean, changes could happen because of this so uh, all right everybody Fortnite. from google and apple move over to the switch there you go <laughs> I mean, Fortnite brings in like 1.7 billion or something like that per year on on apple or or something That's, like that it's, it's a lot of money and and of course apple wants wants a piece of that pie i mean they absolutely want their 30 percent of that that's a lot of money Mm -hmm. and they feel and they're right i mean think about it if you could buy you know a dollar using the app store or for that same dollar you only have to pay 80 cents most people are going to pay the 80 cents and then that will actually probably encourage them to buy a little bit more and and obviously epic makes 10 percent more on all those sales epic's going to make a ton and apple knows it and apple wants a piece of that pie (laughs) <laughs> that's the whole reason this is all about money that's then yuki said it's, it's totally always anti- about money totally anti-consumer and Gross. it could you, like like uh, jeff said this could have some real lasting effects so it should be something to keep an eye on for sure mm-hmm. it's crazy 
What about you, Jeff? What's your topics you want to talk about? So one of them is, is did you guys watch the Netflix series High Score yet? Nice. I I started episode one, and unfortunately I started it a little too late, so I fell asleep. But <laughs> yeah, I I don't even know how the I think I don't even know how this came. up. Nope, I correct myself. My sister actually had sent me a screenshot saying, "Did it's like the number one." And I zoom in on the picture. I read the description. Yeah, and it was. I was just like, "Oh my gosh, this is exactly what I want to be watching." So I, I want to say I got like ten minutes in, uh, then I fall asleep, and then I've been busy. But I will watch it. I'm guessing you did. Um, I started it up too. I mean, I forgot that it dropped this week. So like, mm-hmm. obviously, I looked at it tonight, and I'm like, "Oh yeah," but we got to record. So, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, yeah. episode two for me is where I'm like, I don't want to jump ahead because it's going through the history and it obviously starts with Atari. But yeah. episode two is the Nintendo. I think episode three is where you get into Sega. And I'm just. And JP disappears. It's kind of like the console wars movie that we were supposed to get. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. D- just so you know, JP, when you're getting hyped, you uh, you disappear on us. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny. So, guys, if you can't hear me, that's just because I'm normally excited. Otherwise, I'll just be a droll. <laughs> it's, it's like, you know how there's different decibels that humans can't hear, but other animals can? When yeah. JP gets excited, he moves to one of those decibels. You know so what like, I like don't... to think, Barry, is I like to think that he's talking at such a high frequency as he ramps up that he overloads his internet and has to pause to catch up. <laughs> Maybe. Apparently, um, I'm the first person in history. No, yeah, you're not you the are. first. <laughs> From what I've heard, I've heard good things about it. I've also heard criticisms. As a, they apparently skip over a lot of of things. Of course um, they do. It's a documentary. With, they can't cover everything unless they want it to be like infinite time. But but I mean like they they don't talk about Ralph Bear at all. You know the inventor of Pong, um, and like th- things like that that shouldn't be glossed over, like important mm-hmm. figures. Yeah, but I mean, uh, Ralph Bear should be talked about. <laughs> was he? No, he should be. Oh, he should be. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Absolutely. Like, he should be. And that's 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 where I'm that's part of the criticisms I've heard from other, you know, uh, industry analysts and scholars. Um, but I do plan to watch it. We we were in the middle of Umbrella Academy when it dropped, so we just finished that season two, so now we'll probably watch that. Nice. nice. Yeah, and I, I watched that crazy power um, Netflix show with Jamie Foxx. Which, oh, I saw that too. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, yeah. I was just watching in the background as I'm updating stuff. <laughs> um, the other thing that I um wanted to talk about was Battletoads. So there's like a yes. double faceted. Number one, it dropped, so it's on Game Pass. Um, played it, got to the first le- the first uh, level end boss, and I beat both of them. And the because it's like ends up like the guy splits into two or whatever. And it paused, and it and I got a soft lock immediately on a brand new game. Oh, I did. I did see somebody else posting that. That's probably me. Um, <laughs> but I like I literally did a video and I went, all right, yay. And I'm like, oh, turn that off now. Let's go record the podcast. Um, but um, also the same same other thing that dropped today is I am eight bit is doing another one of their classic Nintendo re releases, and so now only for a hundred dollars you can get. Battletoads on the NES. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I have a CIP copy. Actually, I have a sealed copy over here of Battletoads. Do I, do I need to, like, put that sucker up on eBay or something now that it's, like, <laughs> go get it water graded and all that? Like, I mean, uh, I just think $100 for a brand new NES game is just insane. I mean, I was getting criticized at $60 for a brand new developed game. And I'm like... They're doing it for a hundred for a game that's already out. No programming. Yes, but it's a special game. color. That's true. There's two colors. You got a chase yeah. card. Yeah, I will. Um, I'll say that. I mean, there's nothing new with with them because they've done. I think the Mega Man. They've done. I, I want to say Street Fighter also. So this is you know some, and I think Lion King as well recently. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, it's expensive. I mean, it's definitely a. Definitely. I, don't even, I mean, do they even warn you not to play it? Probably. <laughs> um. What did you say, JP? Nothing. Did they warn you to what? Not use it in the original consoles. 
Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing is, is that if that's going to melt your console, it worries me because the same guys are in the 6502 Collective or whatever it is that are doing homebrew games. So they just released Rolly. They've released Haunted Halloween. They've released Spookatron and other NES homebrew games. So if they have faults in their development of their games, that's kind of problematic since they're doing a lot of releases for the homebrew scene. And so they're going to... I've never seen a console melt from any homebrew. So I think that'd be pretty funny. So what did you think of the first level of Battletoads? Um, so interestingly, I didn't like the trailer at all when they when they dropped it. But the game itself plays fun. Um, there's a lot of comboing. You can literally tag between all three Battletoads as you play. Um, yep. the, the art style looks cool when you're playing the game. Um, there's a lot of cutscenes and anime style talking. Uh, London was in with me, my daughter, and she was like laughing because there was a spot where, like, they're introducing the battle toads. They play the pause music at the beginning, by the way. Um, <laughs> and and when they talked about it, like they introduced themselves and they said, "Oh, the one is with the sunglasses." And he's like, "And I'm the best kisser." And London was like cracking up because he said that, like the joke. And I'm like, I didn't laugh at the joke, but my daughter did. So I'm like. Yep, it's not for me. The, the the humor it's for the younger generation, which is cool. But like, I was like, man, that's interesting, right? Like, yeah, Battle Toads when it came out was a kind of a rip off Turtles, which was geared towards the younger generation. You look at the '87 cartoon; it was definitely, you know, geared towards us. And now Battle Toads, they they can do that. They can gear it towards younger, you know, a younger audience, but us. That, are, that grew up with Battletoads, we're going to get it anyways or play it because we have the nostalgia. You know so what's interesting win -win is that my daughter said something that kind of blew my mind. So my daughter's eight. She goes, oh, the Battletoads, is that just the, the copycat of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? I'm like, <laughs> how do you know either of these? Because <laughs> she's and then, smart. And initially she asked me if it was Earthworm Jim. And I'm like, what? Like you're, <laughs> I'm like, you're on YouTube too much. I like it. <laughs> so now she knows all that she's like name dropping stuff and i'm like you're only in third grade this is, this, uh -huh. is this is perfect this is perfect i would be proud be oh like, um absolutely but she needs to start playing the damn games with me instead of just <laughs> gotta get her to play some of these games i beat all toads one on the nes no dinner till you do <laughs> it's a struggle <laughs> yeah speaking but... of playing yeah we move on to the game of the week. What was the game of the week? No, uh, it's put out by some weird people. I don't know. They, Did you? They, right? they, <laughs> oh no, they, these, they're doing it physically. I don't know. There's some weird people. Oh, some weird people. People. I think JP might know them. Yeah, yeah, they they seem okay. Ah, the conventions, but overall nice guys. Uh, we are talking about Super Blood Hockey. From Loren Lemke and Digerati, and physically published by Premium Edition Games. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Super Blood Hockey was originally released uh, on Windows in August of 2017. Uh, later ported to the Switch and released uh, last year, April 26th of 2019. It's a classic ice hockey video game. However, the gore and the blood are over the top. Over the top. Um, console versions added a franchise mode, um, and basically it focuses on the violent side of hockey. Uh, it contains overly exaggerated blood and violence, giving it a mature rating, heavily inspired by the NES release of Ice Hockey, using many of the mechanics introduced in that game. So it's a classic. So who wants to start with their, um, their experiences with, uh, this week? in super blood hockey well let's get jp go because we know he probably didn't play it oh <laughs> wrong but thanks <laughs> i did play well, this night said oh i still need to play it oh you forgot it now. <laughs> i had to I, play i know he at least did the, I, he at least did I the mean, intro because he posted the intro yeah no i have played this i mean i i was late to the party so i didn't play this really until i would say a few months ago a little bit longer than that so i didn't play it at launch but i will say i mean the game is is fantastic and yes you know spoiler alert you know we're all fans 
Spoiler alert. <laughs> publishing it physically, but but aside from that, we're going to explain why we love it. Um, and I'll, I'll go first, and then anyone can take over after that. For me, I did not grow up playing, you know, ice hockey or Blades of Steel on the NES. Uh, I wasn't even a hockey fan. But this game, the humor, the music, and the gameplay, for me, is what sold it. Um, right from the start, I mean, the game is just hilarious with its writing. Uh, I highly recommend everyone playing the tutorial first because it really breaks you into the game and tells you right up front, it's not going to be easy. You're not going to just, you know, go up to the goalie and score. You're going to have to work for it. And, you know, they show you the mechanics very quickly. It's like maybe five to ten minutes, and it gets you familiar with the game. And then when you go into franchise mode, to me that, I mean, may have had one of the best intros ever. <laughs> um, so I'll just explain it briefly because, uh, you know, that's where the story is. And and and, and, and. and just of, of like the RPG elements of the game. And then what? <laughs> you broke up. You're like, oh. and and. Every time yours breaks up, I'm gonna start going whoa! Every time it pauses from now. <laughs> Continue. Well, JP. you get three, and then you're taking over. So, <laughs> so you want to join the league? You have no money. So what do you do? You donate an organ. So they hit you with a trank, and then they literally just perform an <laughs> operation on you. It was something that I didn't even expect to see coming anywhere. And it was hilarious, all in, done in like cutscenes. Uh, so to me, right off the bat, I knew this is going to be a really fun game. Whoa! And the way that you get your team members is you. And Jeffrey, take over. <laughs> you said you got three. That was one. That was one. Yeah, I I don't think I could last through three. So Jeffrey, you explain. <laughs> well, I'm not explaining I'm gonna, the game. You know I'm going to talk about think, my experiences. I, like, <laughs> I think I'm actually going to drop off. I'm going to restart because clearly Maybe. something's happening cool. despite me restarting. So goodbye, everybody. Cool. We'll, we'll, we'll chat. Um, right, so cool. essentially, um, Barry, I've been playing the game ever since we um, we signed the contract with, with Loren and Digerati. Um I've been playing every once in a while. And uh, being a hockey fan, I always play violent. So like, I'll play versus like like, buddies that actually play hockey, and they're sitting there trying to skate, and I'll just run full blast into them and, like, check them and knock them down and take the puck, and they're like, hey, that's not how you're supposed to play. <laughs> and, like, I'll literally just crush them. And this game, like, makes you want to do that, which is ridiculous. Um, I absolutely did not play the tutorial, so I might have to just to, <laughs> just to check it out because if it's, like, funny like that where it shows you, like, how to kind of get your get your skating on uh that might be interesting because i'm almost to the point now where it feels like when i play it's like stressful and random when i can score which is yes. it's interesting because like you can't just run up you could i i've never been able to just run up do a charge shot or a normal shot and just score i have never. to like fake them out juke them um I was having fun and because there's like challenges and in one of the challenges there's 12 on 12 mode and I'll like have them all come after me and I'll keep circling behind the net and they'll like chase me and then I have everybody behind the net and I just pass real quick and score like that was one of my classic uh, scoring moves that I'll continually use. Um, I did mention challenges. I was able to beat a couple of the challenges so far. Um, there's one where you have to play, I think it's like eight to four, eight, eight players to four players. And each time I'm like up and score and then like they score like two at the end and kick my butt. I'm like, no, <laughs> um, what's interesting though is when you beat a challenge, you unlock an option, right? So like I have, I think it's puck elasticity. So if you put that all the way up, it shoots like a damn pistol out of a shotgun and goes flying all over the screen. Um, I've unlocked the player speed, so they're going all over the place real fast. Or you can you can do the opposite, and make everything slow like as hell. Um, I've been enjoying That's for this. every hmm? you can do like individual, right? What's up? You, you can't make like your team really fast and their team really slow. Just to no, just it's goes. it just changes the entire gameplay. Um, one thing, because we have a direct lead to the developer, I did ask, I'm like, man, I wish you would have unlocked, like, or in a challenge would have had, like, you could unlock more players in, like, default mode. 
because the only way you can do 12 on 12 is with the challenge and technically it is still the default mode so you could still play like up to five minute periods but i was like man it would be pretty cool to be able to do it within all the tricks and everything and just have like 12 on 12 chaos mode um he did say he had a lot more challenges created um just there, there's just so much uh or so little time when you're a single developer is what he was putting out um but i ended up also doing franchise mode um you know got my organ taked out taken out and everything um ironically is so i played the because what you do is so you get all your players you buy them literally from prison um <laughs> you like go through like the roster almost like playing cards and you see all their stats um i went mid-range with all this so i kind of picked like pretty cool mid-range uh players and i went for low brain damage because brain damage is the thing <laughs> and uh, you can ch you can teach and choose how they train every day which costs money because you have to pay them as well as how they eat every day and that'll change whether they get fat or skinny and it changes all of their stats and what type of player they are um and then what i've been doing is i haven't been doing a ton of it and i've just like i sent them all the one thing i went and you can like sleep and they train while you sleep and then there's game day and you play a game um and going in line with the patch that we alluded to um my team's called the death bringers of course <laughs> um and so I played the first game, and I actually won by the skin of my butt, but I lost a fight during that. And when I lost the fight, my one of my players got injured. And so, like, he's on his on a bed, but they, they'll heal, like, after, like, a week, but they cost you money every day. Which oh, no. is Yeah, and so then I had to buy another player, because if you get to a game day and you don't have enough players, you get, like, disqualified or something. Something happens. I didn't want to check it. But you also can't go over budget. So if you lose all your money, something happens. So I was going through and I simulated the next like two or three days before the next game day. And I, was, I think I was within $2. Oh, no. So I literally was able to get to the next game. I got to the next game and I was able to play. It. And I ended up winning, I think, 5 to 3. So then I got like another $1,200 or something. So I skated by. The next day, there's another game day, and that's where I'm at right now. But I went over, and I wanted to check it out, and I pulled the plug on my player because he was costing me money. To... <laughs> he had, like, a sprained ankle or something. <laughs> I pulled the plug, and he, ex he exploded like Johnny Depp in The Nightmare on Elm Street. It just went blood went everywhere when I pulled the plug. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, but I, yeah, like it's freaking ridiculous. Though. I pulled the plug on him, murdered someone, which is hilarious. Um, I did like how it, if you go through the um the coach's guide, it says, "Don't worry about pulling the plug on your players. Just make sure you toss them in the dumpster out back when you're done with them." <laughs> I was like, "What?" Oh, uh, freaking ridiculous! But. Yeah, so I um I've only simulated or not even simulated, but I've only played through uh, two different um games so far. I think a whole season is just one month from what I'm seeing, um which is interesting, but yeah, yeah but it's it's super cool. Um, I have definitely not won. I've won both of my matches in franchise mode but in like exhibition mode I, hell no i've been losing a lot <laughs> like I, I go through and i'm getting crushed sometimes because it's like it's pretty challenging um yeah so while we're still tap dancing what was your experience bear um so yeah i i've been a fan of hockey my whole life and i was uh you know blades of steel and a nice hockey uh, played a ton back you know in the nes days and you know a lot of the nhl games on the super nintendo and the genesis and uh, even like the gamecube when i'm uh, on launch day i got like nhl hits 2002 on oh, the, the the uh 360 came out one of the first games i got was nhl 2k6 like i always enjoyed you know hockey games and mm -hmm. since the switch didn't have any it was kind of sad, sad but this really scratched that itch like this was a pleasant surprise because I didn't get it as early as you did, but when I did get it, uh, I started with exhibition, did the training in exhibition. I was like, all right, I'll just do this, and it was tough, and I won. I was like, okay, 
well, let me try franchise mode now. And franchise mode really was amazing because they had something similar in NHL hits where you could do a franchise and you could build up your team and the stats and all that stuff. And I used to play that all the time. And this very much reminded me of it to a different degree with with all the training regimens and feeding and um, and obviously the, the, the battles and stuff. So I went in first game. We lost, but I wound up injuring one of their players and killing another one of their players. <laughs> so, so I I lost, but damn it, I, I made them pay for the loot. <laughs> you know, and it was funny because when when the guy dies, he just stays there. And when they when they're when they're gravely like when they're lightly injured, they're they're off for a short bit and they'll come back. Yeah. But when they're gravely injured or dead, they're permanently gone. You will forever play. So I was playing four v two at the end, but only like thirty seconds. I couldn't score because it is tough. But it was just hilarious. I, I've absolutely like not killed somebody but gravely injured them, and then I shot the puck and it bounces off of them. <laughs> yeah, but, but I actually killed them. I'm like, oh my god, I killed somebody. Right? Screw you for getting me to lose. So I lo- actually lost my first two games in a in a franchise. But the players still gained stats. And then I came back, and I started winning. Oh, well, actually, that game that I did lose, I actually lost in overtime. So did you run yeah. out of money at all? No, I haven't run out of money. Man, what my did I do? My players have been good though. I got I got, I got players with with uh, low brain damage. And they've they've just won every fight. Like we just beat the crap out of all the other teams. Um, and it was funny because um, it's unlike unlike real hockey, um, it it is just a win loss ratio, which I kind of don't like. I kind of wish they used the point system because in real hockey, if you go into overtime, you still get a point. Yeah. And then if you win, you get two points instead of one. Um, so my overtime loss didn't give me anything. It still counted as a loss, which. Which kind of sucks because that's just not how hockey is. But then I went, like my third game, I went up against the second place team and I beat them. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And it was North Korea. I was like, oh great, I'm fighting North Korea. <laughs> and it was just, it was hilarious though. It's a lot of fun. The 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 actions over the top. You beat the crap out of everybody. Um, but it is difficult. Like if you're used to doing like quick one timers and scoring like in the NHL games, um, you cannot do that here. The goalies are just really brutal. Um, and they will they will destroy you if you get close to them too. Um, yes. But I really think this is a game. If you are a hockey lover, I think you should definitely play this. And I'm not just saying that because we're putting it out. Um, it is awesome. <laughs> it's I mean, there's awesome. a reason why we're putting it out. Like it's like exactly. a gem. Like it's it's just one of those things where we're bringing an experience of finally getting you know a, a new school style awesome hockey game on the Switch. There's only really a couple hockey experiences on the Switch, period. One's part of a party game. Another one's on a Namco collection. Um, and it? that's it. Yeah, the Kunio Kun Classics has Iki Iki Hockey Boo on it, which is also an RPG hockey game, which is fun. Um, but like that, but th- this one is like amazing. Like it's just like brand new polish of fresh paint and really crazy action and it's over the top gore just modernizes it and shows like the classic style that Loren did because you could tell he loves ice hockey and classic games and then he just added so much flavor to it yeah there's there's a lot of love to this game and the, and the humor is definitely on point and my guess is if you run out of money you probably sell another organ because you like you sell a kidney and it's like we took one your left kidney but you still have your right kidney so my guess is they take your right kidney if you run out of money and and you either you know run out of organs or you <laughs> you uh run out of money i don't know we'll see so uh but yeah th- there's just there's some other things i don't know if anything will happen like you can leave your building i don't know if you've tried that no you leave your building. yeah there is a uh you're going to uh there's like a little alley like you walk outside and it's like dark no matter what time it's always dark and there's there's like nothing out there and i don't know why um or what it's for (laughs) oh my goodness like yeah it's i i don't know i think that there's some classicness and 
Um, somebody posted Crunchberry in the uh, chat, which literally is Barry's face now on, on the Crunchberry. Barry hates it, don't uh, you? Yeah. <laughs> so our Discord, if anybody is listening, is, is classically hilarious. Like, I, I don't... <laughs> it's because you do this on purpose. Because you get your thick dollies out of it. <laughs> hey, now we have a uh, berry that we could utilize for the next direct. This is perfect. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I actually sent Saru another message today on both accounts and still nothing. I don't and know what's up. We need to ask Saru if he wants to do an interview too because he literally did art that's part of a direct. So he's part of the... Um, part of the uh, company <laughs> whether he wants to or not no he um he's definitely a cool dude it's great he's probably live streaming too he live streams every day um but yeah so uh jp's computer apparently is from 1998 so it takes an hour and a half to reboot you notice mine took like two minutes to reboot because i have a modern computer um we can sit here. Um, obviously, we have a high recommend of this game. Otherwise, we wouldn't be publishing it. I mean, that's a that's a given for Super Blood Hockey. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, we, yeah. we have off. We're still waiting for him because we want to give him the thing. We we actually did not discuss for next week's. We did not discuss what ne- what the next game is going to be. Um, I was on a call with JP and I mentioned a game that we'll, we're, we're, we uh, both said would be cool one to cover because JP actually beat it recently. So we know he already played it so he didn't have to play it this week and we can't dab at disappointment. Uh, we're going to do uh, the Evil Land collection uh, that was released by Super Rare Games. So that's going to be a really cool one. I'm almost done with Evil Land 2. So that'll be good excitement yeah evil land one's a really short experience and then evil land two is a epic ridiculous action I'll rpg to buy those digitally because i don't want to open up my super <laughs> ones oh going we up. found a game that barry didn't play <laughs> i didn't it's, play them all yeah they're fun they're fun now um so let's go over um a little bit of nuances when we come to um come to the switch right now because like of course we got the the game releases launched uh, we fixed a lot of little issues here and there we're about to start like massive like everybody should be seeing premium edition games all over the internet's pretty soon um yeah we're, we're ramping up uh very shortly um and we're gonna wait for the dollar challenge till jp um and his 1998 computer uh, that's running windows 95 <laughs> gets rebooted <laughs> Um, so I guess we could go over what we've got in, and JP can then talk about his 100 games that he got in in the last week. He, um, interestingly, I did get in the Evercade, finally, that I pre-ordered a long time ago. Oh, nice. Yeah. Did you uh, the 10-pack, right, all the games and stuff? Yeah, I got the 10-pack in the case and everything. I, I pre-ordered it in, from Europe a while ago, and so the only game I opened up and played, uh, I played it for a little bit, was the Mega Cat Studios Collection. Um, How'd you enjoy? Uh, there's a, so there's a little bit of lag, but it's not bad. I like the feel of the actual handheld in my hands. It's it's nice and large. It's almost the size of a Switch Lite when it comes to like width, but it's a little thicker, so it actually fits your hands real nice. Uh, the buttons feel nice. There's little clicky L and R's, of course, but um, the buttons feel good. The only reason why I know there's a little bit of lag is because I was playing this game called Super Painter. And I have it also the ROM uh, because it was part of a competition for Nest Dev. So I have the ROM, so I was playing it before on an actual Nintendo, and it's like perfect, like jumping. Whereas now there's a tiny bit where I was getting hit by enemies, and I had to get used to it. Um, interesting too is that they did. I did get the newest firmware, which is I think 1.20 that was on my console, so you can remap the buttons, but ironically is you can't remap the nes buttons so the games have to support it and even on the mega cast studios collection the sega genesis games that they had you can remap those buttons but like a b and c are right where they need to be whereas the nes a and b are a and b or b and a and i would like them to be where they fall naturally for like super nintendo you know the x and the b or or whatever they are i think it's i think they're backward they're x y and a b and so i would like them to be there but i can't remap those so (laughs) like literally the ones i would want to remap 
are not the ones I can remap right now until they put it in the actual um, BIOS, which I don't think they're going to do. I think they're going to keep it inherently on the cartridges somehow or within patches or something. It's, it's interesting how they do it because you would think they could just do everything with it, with the remapping. That was kind of my selling point, though, was like, oh, well, I could take all these retro games and remap the buttons. Um, did you actually play yours at all yet, Barry? Yeah, I, I messed around a little bit with it, and I, I really did enjoy it. I mean, is it perfect? No, but it's definitely ambitious and a lot better than it could have been, and you could tell there's a lot of love and care mm -hmm. with it, and I'm, I'm going to be getting all, all the games that come out for it. Um, it's just really nice to have a brand-new handheld in you know 2020 that's not from the big three because that's one of those things i specialize in is the history of handhelds and yep. so many people know all the game boy and the game gear and you know nintendo and sega's handheld rivalry and maybe the turbo express and then obviously sony with the psp and the vita and they're like oh yeah, that's it like microsoft never got in it's only been those those companies and it's like no there's a host of other companies that have done handhelds even before you know Nintendo and even Atari with the Lynx got into it and that's to me always been the the fun you know I, I love the mainstream handhelds so I think there's just some charm to the the underdog trying to get in and trying to get their piece of the pie and a lot of innovation and sometimes really crappy stuff too but it's mm -hmm. really cool to see Evercade uh, being that right now that underdog that you know non big um, big three just you know making a scene and and here's the kicker like in 2020 it would be so easy for them to do like an emulation handheld there's tons of those that doesn't use physical media but to be 2020 you know come out as an underdog as, as a, a, a smaller company and do physical media is amazing and i absolutely want to support that yeah and it's cool uh, they have collections um the one thing is is that all their collections the art is just like the box art and stuff for most of them. Um, we're about to see a pretty cool side collection with Tanglewood and Xeno Crisis, which I think yeah. looks really rad. Um, and I definitely pre-ordered the Oliver Twins collection on the Kickstarter from Chris Wilkins back in the day, which is interesting. So it'll be crazy to see when that actually comes out. Um, and then they're doing some Lynx games in the future, too, which I'm not sure if I'm going to get or not, be, but I might because it's on the Evercade because you got that backwards screen now. Like, I don't know yet. Don't know yet. But um, So I got that in, um, and I only got in one Switch game this week. Well, oh, te okay. technically two. <laughs> I got in... <laughs> The Darius Cosmic Collection Arcade and Console. Oh, nice. That's still strictly doesn't... limited. Yeah, strictly limited. It was sitting on my um, on my porch, um, and they do number them in the back with like a printing um, on the back of them. So this is released twenty seven by Strictly Limited. Um, I do like the Darius games, so it was cool to get them for sure. They came with the little pins outside of the. Uh, cartridges i just got the regulars i didn't get anything special with them um because i've been on my buying freeze for a while so i've um i'm getting in like backlog stuff that i've pre-ordered a long time ago which is pretty crazy and then i'm gonna be one of those people just like some of the uh listeners where i'm gonna be utilizing the switch collector books myself just to figure out what i need to collect still which is gonna be fun i i love going back to old systems and like snapping snatching up like classics and figuring out like what i don't really know about um being in engaged with the books though i'm gonna be like have to forget about what i wrote about which is interesting <laughs> that's gonna be like tough to do because i have to like play and write about everything um which is crazy um so uh what'd you get in bear um so yeah i got in uh nowhere near i'm sure what jp got <laughs> but uh, I got my memory of us uh, finally came in from Red Art. Um, I got not one, but two of my universe, my babies, because apparently I had it on Amazon and Best Buy, so I have to return one of them. Uh, I got my Mountain Rescue Simulator that uh, from Europe. Uh, and then today I got the Okana, um, the four rhythms across the blue. Mm -hmm. um, the PQ uh, Day 1 edition, and I also got Fight Crab with the CD 
from uh, Playasia came in today. Oh, cool. You have to let me know what how Fight Crab is. I've seen it, and I didn't pull the trigger on it yet because wasn't didn't know if it was any good or not. Yeah, I haven't I haven't touched it yet, but uh, I'm I'm wish it was a, a an English cover, but that's as far as I know the only way. And knowing my luck, it's gonna be brought out in America, and I'll be like, yay, double dip, we. <laughs> Ah, oh, craziness. But, but yeah. JP came back, right? Huh? What's up? J JP came back. Well, I'm here. I, yeah, I heard his kids in the background. They were serenading us while we were talking. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't sure if you knew. Cause I was like, oh, I could yeah. tell that JP's back. So, uh, so, JP, what did you get in since we went over what we got in? Sure. So this week I got in from Germany, Seasons Match 1, 2, 3 HD, all on cart. I got in also, I also got in the Iokana, uh, four rhythms across the blue. I got in today, three games. So I got an in instant sports summer games. I got in, is it wrong to try to pick up girls in the dungeon? It is. The Familia Myth Infinite Combat. And then I got the European cover release of Super Trench Attack from Pixel Heart. Nice. So slow, small week this week so far. <laughs> so far. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a slow week for JP. Um, so, JP, we were um, tap dancing while we could wait for you to get back. Um, go ahead and give us your... Because we talked about Super Blood Hockey. We talked about our experiences. We also talked about that Evo Land uh, 1 and 2 are good, from Super Rare is going to be our next game of the Playcast. But mm -hmm. go ahead and give us your uh, Super Blood Hockey story. Sure. So for me, I called my team the Switch Maniacs. I was Coach JP. Yeah. Um, I am horrible at that game, and it's okay because <laughs> I think what's great about it is I don't necessarily want it to be easy, and I'm glad that it's not just go up to the goal, as I was saying, and scoring every time. I mean, it is it, there's strategy involved. Like, yes, it's simple arcade hockey where you pass, shoot, and and you you know attack your opponents or even your own members. But I think what's great is that at the end of the match, you kind of see the like the the percentages, and the goalies, at least for me, block like eighty seven to ninety five percent of the shots. Mm -hmm. And that just really means that you have to have a lot of strategy. So early on, and this is why I'm glad I did the, the, the tutorial, is that you know you have to really learn how to pass to your teammates, trick the goalie, you know, have him move to another area and then score. And even then it's not guaranteed. But to me, the game is just, incredibly fun i mean the chiptune music uh from sean is just i mean that i i just want that music i mean it's just it pumps you up it gets you excited and it's just it's perfect arcade hockey music um the game itself is perfect either you're doing the exhibition and you're just you're just enjoying it or you're doing the franchise mode where you know you you recruit your inmates as your team members and then you actually have them on like a training regimen you have mm. them on a diet i mean it's so detailed and I think, honestly, a, at first glance, people may think, oh, it's just like an NES hockey game with blood. And it's so much more than that. Like, yeah, it has that. And that's exactly like the, the nostalgia appeal. But the game is so in-depth and it's, and it's so witty, too. Like, you really can read all of the posters. You can read all of, the, like, the, the different options that you have for your team members. Like, I love it where it's like, you know, drugs are bad, but don't worry, you won't be tested at any point. You can actually give your team members drugs i mean it's just like mm -hmm. it's crazy um the game is just fun and funny like it, it really took me by surprise when i first started playing it but it, it's it's really enjoyable and yeah you know like i said we're doing the physical of it because we do like it but honestly like even if we weren't i mean this is a game that i would have picked up um and like i said i'm not a hockey fan like i'm not even an JP, arcade did you fan. throw any of your players into the dumpster yet did you did you kill anybody no yet? no so i have mm -hmm. not um i i think i've KO'd some of the opponents uh i've you hey. know on your calendar one you of my your... guys jp got injured with a sprained ankle i pulled the plug on him and he squirted blood like he was in <laughs> a nightmare on elm street it was like blood everywhere i'm like what <laughs> oh, sprained ankle and I love that when they're actually explaining, like, you know, they're, they're showing you the locker room and the training area. And they're like, yeah, you know, if anyone gets injured, you could just throw them in, in the dumpster. And you're thinking, haha, like, it's a funny little joke. And it's not. I mean, like, I mean, Loren has, I mean, he, he made 
to me, honestly, I feel like this is going to be a hidden gem on the console um, because it really is so much more than just bloody retro arcade hockey. And if it was only that, it would have been enough, but there's just so much more in that franchise mode. Mm -hmm. And it really is like an RPG because even when you lose um, you know, against the opponents, you're still leveling up your characters and you get to choose what you want to do. So do you want them to build up their strength? Do you want to teach them how to fight? Do you want the speed? You know, the accuracy, all that kind of stuff. And you know, there's a lot of strategy to it. And there's also like 99 players you can choose from, all with different attributes. So to me, it's just highly enjoyable. Um, whether you're doing the franchise mode, whether you're doing the just the exhibition or the tournament, I mean, it really is such a solid game. And it, it's so much fun. Like, it really is. It's just... JP, if we have anything to say about it, it's not going to be a hidden gem. It's going to be a known gem. Oh, yeah. Hey, it'll be hidden in a couple of years if people don't uh, pre-order it, that's for sure. But, <laughs> you better uh, get your copy. <laughs> that's right. Pre-orders are open on premiumeditiongames.com right now. Uh, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> but, yeah, I, uh, I'm very happy that this is our first release. Um, and as I got to replay it again for the playcast, it just makes me realize and remember exactly why we picked it as our first game. I mean, it's just, it is fantastic. So um, that, that's my two cents on it. I'm, I'm a huge fan. So, yeah. So, so now that people have listened, I can absolutely go into um, project update territory since we are absolutely not waiting until pre-orders close to begin like ordering the game and everything like we're not waiting forever like we're gonna we're beginning the entire production we began it well before we announced the company um so literally i got back the um the patches uh not not the actual in hand but the quotes for the patches and they look amazing like like they're woven woven patches that are like hand woven and when we're talking patches we're talking the challenge patches that we alluded to last week on the playcast. And, yeah, so our cards are going to be a challenge card. It's going to be amazing. So how do you get this challenge uh, patch? I've already done the challenge, actually, but I, I couldn't, couldn't. No, you haven't, that. Barry. Because <laughs> we're not no going to... There's no screenshot, and the challenge is not going to be spoiled to anybody listening. Um, so, you, so you haven't... You haven't done the challenge, and and if Barry says that, then we'll just have to change what the pat the challenge is, and before we print the card, because um, if it gets spoiled, then we're changing the challenge. We're gonna make it really hard, like master and get go undefeated in franchise mode for an entire season or something. <laughs> so how do people find out about this challenge card? So the the 